You do not want to miss a minute of today's episode. We've got tons of news to talk about. We're never not working. We're going to be into the starts of the week. We got matchups. And of course, Jason surprises us with some eloquence in the Boom Boom Kicker segment. Make sure you like this video. Yes, like this video, subscribe, and enjoy. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Hey, this is Austin Eckler, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's football time. I think. We hope. And we pray. <laughs> oh, you can't get worse, right? Thursday oh. night? You, oh, you no, don't, no, no, don't tempt fate. We thought that two weeks ago. And then I think it did get worse. It got worse. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, last week was worse than two weeks ago. And tonight, and we pray. <laughs> Come on, Cardinals! Please, please do something. Yeah, well, we have injuries that are marking up tonight's game that we'll talk about. Classic uh, Thursday. Yeah, I mean, I think the offense on the New Orleans side will be the most interesting thing to watch because they just don't have a lot of. We don't even know who the quarterback is. The last quote I got from uh, Dennis Allen was. I think we'll let you know right before kickoff. That that's what his actual. <laughs> I mean, that's what the quote was. Yeah, I mean, they I, I, they know who it is, and it's going to be Andy Dalton. I think it is. Yeah, but based on how the teams were practicing, Dandy Andy. Yeah, Dalton. Maybe. I think it's going to be Andy Dalton. Uh, yeah, I mean, not a guarantee, but I believe it will be Andy Dalton. So stupid. I it's uh, stupid. It, look, if you're talking about I mean, Jimmy if, Garoppolo versus Trey Lance, and you're not going to name, oh, okay. There is an advantage. You you prepare. Are you going to have a spy? Are you going to – the difference between Andy Dalton and Jameis Winston, whichever quarterback is going to be starting, all you're doing at practice is having your cornerbacks on the jugs machines practicing catching because it's coming your way. <laughs> I see what you're saying. Yeah. You, pre you prep the same. <laughs> I mean – So stupid. What would be the advantage of telling people? What is that? It's just it's the endorsement of your guy, like publicly saying, "Andy, you're the guy. We believe in you." We're but, telling but, but everybody. But if they did that privately, does it matter publicly? No, it it I mean it doesn't really matter either way. But that's why it's more stupid to play this dumb game thinking you get an advantage. Well, we don't have time for this debate today. <laughs> uh, it's, the debate's done. It's stupid. Okay, it's been settled. <laughs> there is no. <laughs> Debate. Thursday, October 20th, the fantasy football is never not working. News and notes, the fantasy forecast, the starts of the week, the boom, boom kicker. Lots going on, so we better get it started. Never not working. Presented by Head & Shoulders, Scalp Shield Technology. Available at Walmart. It is time... For never not working this week and uh we've had a lot of discussion over the past week in particular about what nfl offenses are doing why we have a reduction in total points scored why people are leaving the week with uh disappointment on the whole even if you sneak out a win i mean we've had discussions about total points scored in our leagues and uh there's this kind of like overarching feeling of like this amount of points scored per week equals you deserve to win. Yeah. Whereas if you win with less than that, you didn't deserve it. Well, scoring is down. And so why, why is that happening? And so we wanted to uh, take a little look at what's actually going on and maybe a few things that we can bank on in terms of uh, teams that may recover from this uh, slow start to the 2022 season. Uh, right now, according to Pro Football Focus, we have the lowest yards per drop back since 2007. Gross. So uh, there, there, there's not a lot happening uh, consistently right now. Thanks, Russell. It's all Russell's fault. <laughs> That's true. 
Uh, so we we wanted to look at two different metrics. One He's is dangerous. First, uh, I, let's not let's not, Mike. <laughs> so let's bad. not. Um, he needs a s- more stringent <laughs> PR team to clamp down on some of these. Uh, Sorry, that PR team like, better be like Clorox's PR team. <laughs> it's getting close to the point where, like, remember Baker was in every commercial, but then it was uh-huh. embarrassing that Baker was in every commercial. Yeah. But anyway, we're looking at two metrics: first downs per game. And then red zone touchdown rate. Uh, first downs per game gives us an indicator of which teams can move the football. Um, you know, the number of offensive teams that are getting first, you know, the number of team offensive first downs per game is similar to last year. Okay. But the teams that are improving in first downs per game are throwing fantasy football for a loop. These are the teams that are, have improved the most. Jacksonville's one of them. And you have Philly, okay, that makes sense. You have Cleveland, you have the Giants, you have the Vikings, you have the Falcons, Saints, and the Detroit Lions, believe it or not. Well, and I so believe it. um these are teams that are improving their first down efficiency, but a lot of these teams they prefer to run the football, slow the game down, win the game in an ugly fashion. And even the Eagles, who you, you see on that list and you're like, Oh, they they're great. Well, they're second halves, Jason. How many times have you gone into halftime with a certain amount of points from Jalen Hurts, and that's what you end with? Yeah, it feels like about half the games. And the first halves are great, don't get me wrong, but Jalen, let's uh, let's keep it up. Keep the pedal on the metal. Yes. Set uh, some records, man. Well, the ad or, like, your defense needs to get worse. That yes. would help as well. Yes. The passing offenses that we bought into – in fantasy are the ones that have actually slipped in efficiency in terms of first downs. Cowboys, Bucks, Chargers, and Rams, they've all regressed in first downs per game, and there are a ton of fantasy draft picks on those rosters. And the second metric, the red zone touchdown rate, which is how often does a red zone trip turn into six points. Um, Through six weeks last year, teams averaged a touchdown on 63% of the red zone trips. There's only nine teams doing that this year. Gross. So red zone efficiency has become a major problem. And so what do we actually want in fantasy? We want teams that do both of these things. They get first downs, they sustain the drive, but then they actually are efficient and get it done in the red zone. We want bend, then break. Bend, then break. Come on. Um, And there are only seven teams that rank in top 12 in both of those metrics, the top, uh, the first downs per game and the red zone touchdown rate. Chiefs, Bills. Yeah. Okay, that's what we thought. Mm Mm-hmm. Carry on. Keep playing those players. Continue. Minnesota, Philadelphia, Cleveland. And, uh, you know, I think we believe in those offenses, right, that they can sustain production. Uh, But those are three teams that want to run when the game is neutral. So bear that in mind. But the two big bounce-back teams that I think are the headline of this never not working, the Los Angeles Chargers and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Because – you can believe in the bounce back in these passing games. They throw, they're efficient, they sustain drives. They need to stay healthy. First week that Justin Herbert's off the injury report for his ribs is this week. Chris Godwin just got back. Mike Evans and company. Those are two offenses that I think you can target for buy low opportunities. You know, we've been waiting for Keenan Allen to get back, but it's it's more than that. It's the health of Justin Herbert. Mike, you said they were both unstoppable and completely stoppable yes. in the Monday night game because they had these long sustained first down drives. They just didn't, didn't get that little touchdown efficiency at the end. Well, they had they their folk hero of the the week. Their, yeah, their kicker. They had this, you know, keep keep pushing that narrative on us. And Mike said yesterday, look, the Chargers are on by next week. Keenan may or may not play this week. He may take the extra week. You know, you need extra leverage in trades. If Justin Herbert doesn't have a monster game this week, which look, it could happen. It's Seattle, and it could limit your opportunity to buy low. That might be now versus next week, but if he has just a normal, mediocre kind of middle of the road week, and you go into the buy, you're going to have somebody that's pretty dissatisfied in Justin Herbert over seven weeks, and you sure. may be able to pick him up with a much stronger Keenan Allen on the on the roster, uh, a, a team going into the future. So, um, any other takeaways you guys want to throw in there? No, I, I think the takeaways are right, and those two teams, uh, it, it what an episode to have it on because we're going to be talking starts of the week later uh, at the end of this episode, and we're going to be talking about both those teams. Do you feel similar about Justin Herbert? Or uh, So we, we like Justin Herbert. About Brady? Yeah, about Tom Brady, who's been massively underperforming from what you are used to from Tom Brady. I think, I think the only 
the thing holding you back is the is that narrative of like will the decline in ability happen at some point whereas you know that's not happening for Justin Herbert but I think that there's probably a more compelling case that yeah the bounce back is going to happen you're going to have bigger games from Brady than you've had at the beginning of the year yeah I mean uh, you know the week before last Tom Brady only had one touchdown and it was super disappointing against Atlanta but he was 67 percent completion and threw for 351 yards he didn't look bad it just didn't score in the you know didn't didn't convert to touchdowns and that's what this never not working is talking about so I think that it's those come will back. come yeah Carolina Baltimore the Rams and Seattle all at home for the next four weeks for Tampa so you know you get through those four weeks and he's struggling then we've got a different concern might want to trade for him. yeah all right, get up to 100% dandruff protection. That is never not working with head and shoulder scalp shield technology available at walmart.com. Use it every time you shampoo and see the difference. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Speaking of the Chargers, Keenan Allen, uh, he was asked if he might want to take one more game to let the hamstring heal. He's got the bye week. He said, yeah, most definitely. It's going to be a thought process going into it. Definitely want to play in the smartest way. That's the best thing. Uh, and if it's the best thing, that's what it will be. But yeah, so Josh Palmer didn't practice due to a concussion. Yeah, TBD, just monitor it. I mean, obviously, last time Keenan uh, said, hey, put me in your lineups, he didn't do anything. This time he's saying, oh, absolutely, I'll take the extra week off. Liar, liar. Oh, pants no. on fire. But – I, I actually don't think he plays this week. Well, Gerald Everett's going to be a very interesting start this week. You have They're going to throw the football, and their defense hasn't been very good. Seattle, uh, they can score. So I think Gerald Everett could take advantage of the opportunity. And then you're looking at, like, deep league, DFS, DeAndre Carter. Sure. Um, because you're out of options. If Keenan and Josh Palmer don't play is what I'm saying. Yeah. Those. Uh, speaking of former Chargers, Melvin Gordon. Uh, Nathaniel Hackett came out and said he will start. <laughs> At running back in week seven, <laughs> I would, I mean, if you put him in your lineup. Oh, man. Uh, you know, take four to six Toms. And, Minimum. And then do some of the praying Mike talked about at the beginning yeah. of the show because, look, it could work out. I'm not going to say it can't work out with Melvin Gordon, but, you know, the question of can you trust Melvin Gordon in your lineup this week, it is a very scary proposition to trust him. They interviewed him in the locker room. He, he kind of looked – I mean, it was a funny interview. He looked at the uh, reporters, and he was like – they're like, hey, are you happy you're starting this week? He's like, I was a starter last week. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I think things are going to be okay. So then on the other side here, people – you know, we were – Latavius Murray was kind of the de facto big running back pickup, him, him and Kenyon Drake, and it was – we talked about – I mean, who knows if Latavius Murray is actually the guy. Be cautious when you're going after him. Well, let's say that you were pushed into your, your back to the corner. You had to go hard after Latavius Murray. What do you do with this news? Are you are you putting Latavius Murray in? Or are you no, looking I'm, for a different option? You're looking for a different option. Okay. Obviously, if you had to go hard at Latavius Murray, you probably don't have another option. But Brian Robinson or those two guys? Brian Robinson, for sure. Raheem Bra Mostert or those two guys? Raheem Mostert. Mostert, without a shadow of a doubt. Okay, trick question. Devin Singletary. Ooh, uh, I would play Devin Singletary if he was playing, ah, but he's on by. What if, what if you picked up both of the waiver wire guys, Kenyon Drake? I would play Kenyon Drake. Okay, I, I would too. Yeah, I think I, that makes three of us. Um, Ravens updates. Lamar Jackson was limited. Mark Andrews was li uh, didn't practice. This is a rest day, according to John Harbaugh. Uh, one of the bigger questions was Rashad Bateman. He did return to a limited practice. Oh, okay. Mike is pumping his fist yes. never for the production of Rashad Bateman, but always for the success of Lamar Jackson. Jason, you had some numbers. I don't yeah. know if you have them in front I, of you. I don't have them in front of me, nor do I remember the uh, the, the person what who tweeted are. it. <laughs> nor do I remember nor was it me you speak about. of. Uh, I, I would love to give credit to the person on Twitter uh, who had the numbers, but it showed that Lamar Jackson against the Blitz this year is almost identical in total snaps that he has been blitzed with Rashad Bateman and without Rashad Bateman. With him, he had like 350 yards, seven touchdowns, was just outstanding. And in games where he doesn't have Bateman on the field, it was one touchdown, a hundred and something yards. It was night and day difference. The 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 Cleveland Kyle Kyle did find that. Oh, if great. you want to shout it out, 
Yes, Kyle, who give give credit where credit due. Jordan Vanek on Twitter, seven TDs with Rashad Bateman, only one without him. And I think the 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 extra takeaway in that is that the matchup this week against the Cleveland Browns, they uh, blitzed on fifty percent of their dropbacks last week. So I have been monitoring Bateman uh, very closely. I'll just be honest, for our uh, DraftKings lineup, sure. I'm looking at Lamar Jackson. He costs a lot. If Bateman is out there, I'm confident to play him. If Bateman isn't, I don't want to spend up. And so this isn't about just can I play Bateman, but what he does for Lamar Jackson. Today will be the day of importance because limited on a Wednesday is whatever. It's a matter of does he get a full practice in on Thursday. If he does, I'm in on Lamar. If he doesn't, I'm going to assume that he's not ready for full go this week. Lamar Jackson did come out and say, you're my number one guy. <laughs> he did. He came out and said, that's our number one guy. Rashad Bateman back at practice. Oh, please. Now you put him right back in your lineup. If he's, if he's if full he's today. To go, yeah. 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 I mean, if he's starting on Sunday. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Darren Waller didn't practice. Injured on Monday Night Football. This is a real. Uh, not practicing uh, off of the bye. So he is not fully back to full strength. Obviously, it is still a Wednesday because he was dealing with a hamstring, it could just be, hey, let's let's let him have as much time as possible. Uh, but as all Wednesday practice reports, you you really can't learn very much. Medically cleared, Dak Prescott let's set go, to baby. play in Week Seven. Let's go for Pittsburgh. Both the Muth and Kenny Pickett practice in full on Wednesday. Wow! So Pickett. A full practice on Wednesday, that must have been a very minor concussion situation. I, I suppose so. Well, you did have the passing of concu concussion protocol from Teddy Bridgewater in a timely enough fashion to play. They chose to not make him the starter. So I, I think you could see Kenny Pickett out there this week. Seems like it. Uh, and then for Thursday Night Football tonight, official word, no Michael Thomas, no Jarvis Landry, no Adam Troutman, no Marshawn Lattimore for the Saints. Andy Dalton is expected to start. Do we have any – I mean, is that official or just the expectation from us saying it like 20 minutes ago? Yeah, I, I believe the report is from Jason Moore of the Fantasy Football. <laughs> yeah, I, was I like... expect Andy Dalton to start. <laughs> and then James Conner, questionable despite not practicing. I lean the bad side of questionable because you get 10 more days to get better. Uh, do you guys agree, disagree? Uh, I mean, would you play him, I guess, is the question, if he's active. I would not play him. The Saints' defensive line is great. The The Cardinals' offensive line is extra injured. They already were poor, right? but now they are injured on top of that. So, no, I'm – I'm uh, honestly, if James Conner is out, Eno I don't think is a great play either. He's fine enough from a volume standpoint, should get uh, plenty of the work to, uh, you know, maybe scratch his way up to 10 fantasy points, but uh, I don't think I want to start either. I'll remind people the start set tools available at the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, because I know a lot of people are struggling with Rondale Moore or tonight. I think Rondale's going to have a great game. I do. I think he's going to have. I think he's going to have a lot of targets in this game, and uh, especially if James Conner's out and we are struggling with the offensive line and we need those short area targets. I think Rondale will be involved enough to. You know, start him over those mediocre, like over Garrett Wilson. Yeah, my my projections have him with ten receptions for twelve yards. So, uh, oh, okay. if you're a full PPR, <laughs> all those all those catches behind the line of scrimmage. Oh man, yeah. yeah PJ Tucker would love throwing <laughs> to Rondell Moore. All right, that was today's news and notes brought to you by USAA Insurance. Learn more at USAA.com/insurance. Quick break, and then we're back with the matchups for Week Seven. Rondale Moore is he good yeah uh, I, I don't think I don't think anyone can find out until Cliff Kingsbury's out of the way yeah I mean what if he gives up play calling duties then he's left to his real strength time management <laughs> oh, maybe it was just a lack of focus he needs to focus on how many timeouts he has when to call him I love the he was brought in to be an offensive solution that was his gonna be the calling card he's Look, bringing a, the air raid college offense to kyler murray that's the solution and we're like hey cliff would you give up play calling oh what, what's, gosh. what's weird is that from a from a metric standpoint he's been upper half since he got here with kyler yeah he's got kyler murray but once hopkins left and they were seven and oh last year and then you lose hopkins and they couldn't function which that is part of genius you need to be able to adjust off of uh 
It's not like they didn't know Hopkins wasn't going to be here this past six weeks. Correct. They knew that early. All right, into the forecast we go. Fantasy Forecast. All right, the Atlanta Falcons at 3-3, three and three, taking on the Cincinnati Bengals, who are 3-3. Three and three. Just a battle of heavyweights here. Uh, the DraftKings Sportsbook line, Cincinnati minus 6.5. The over-under is 47. It's at a home in Cincinnati. Uh, you know, you guys have spent a decent amount of time in your lives uh, making fun of Arthur Smith and also making fun of Zach Taylor. Yes. Uh, pick one. To make fun of? Uh, well, no. No, pick one to be your coach. Oh, pick one to be my coach, Zach Taylor. And I probably mock him more, but I I just don't like the methodology of uh, of how you want to win in a perfect world for Arthur Smith. In a perfect world for him, it is the glory days of the Tennessee Titans where I could just run the ball uh, you know, 40 times a game. What we have seen over the last month or so is very, very interesting for the Cincinnati Bengals. Over the last month, they are number one in neutral pass rate and fourth in EPA per passing play. This is in the offseason. Everything I talked about and we talked about for the Cincinnati Bengals is will they let Joe Burrow be the dude? Will they let him drop back and pass? If it's first down, if the game is close, are you just going to keep trying to hand the ball off to Joe Mixon a bunch? And we need to recognize this change because the first couple weeks, it was same old Cincinnati, give the ball a hundred times, neutral game, slow it down. And very similar to what we saw in the reverse last year with the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles came out and they were throwing the ball like crazy and then something happened and they go, you know what, we're better off running the ball. And so they changed. Well, the changes happened here for Cincinnati. I do think that they, they are handing the reins to Joe Burrow, who's been very good lately, and they're going to say you win the game. We've got the weapons to do it. You've proven you can get it done. And in this matchup, the the you know the the strength of the Falcons defense is against the run. Not that they are you know a lockdown rushing defense, but they can be thrown on very very easily. So this matchup, based on what we've been seeing over the last month for the Bengals and how it specifically coalesces with the Falcons, I I believe good things for the Bengals passing game. What's the temperature on Joe Mixon right now? 14th at the running back position through six weeks, which is, you know, that's not uh, terrible. You know, you're going to hope for some bigger games. Like you got week one, he was a top 10 running back. Hasn't been a top 10 running back since then. Um, is this a player that you are buying, selling, holding? What's your view of Mixon right now? If I had Mixon, I would be holding. Uh, I'm fine going to trade for him. The last couple of weeks, things have been way better. Could this be just the natural pickup of the running game because now, like Jason was saying, it they're kind of flipping it. They're going to a more pass-heavy approach. So teams are – that's what they're trying to adjust to. They're scared of the pass. You can't just clamp down and say, let's stop Joe Mixon because we know he's going to get the ball 25 times. So uh, 2.7 yards per carry for the first month. That has skyrocketed to 5.6 the past couple of weeks. So I would be – if you – if you've weathered the storm with Joe Mixon, I think that the points are about to start coming. Now, one of the interesting storylines here, T. Higgins has been banged up. Despite being banged up, he had, I think, 10 targets last week. Yeah. Uh, in games where uh, T. Higgins played a full matchup, he's got a higher target share by a, a, a little less than a percent than Jamar Chase. Yeah, T. Higgins is an every-week start. Uh, we, or, I think we were, Jason, we were answering a question about who – to go after at the wide receiver position, and I threw out T. Oh, Higgins. To target and a yeah, trade, yeah. Yeah, and I threw out T. Higgins because of the, – the Bengals' schedule is just delightful. I believe it is, like, the softest remaining uh, wide receiver schedule. And getting Jamar Chase is going to be very, very difficult, especially since fantasy players that have him, they've been waiting, waiting, waiting. He finally explodes last week. I think that locks in that – Getting Jamar Chase is going to be very difficult, but getting T. Higgins is – you could probably do that. And, over, I mean, on a, on the season, T. Higgins has been fantastic. Like, a, a lot of times better than Jamar Chase, so I would be actively going after him if you could. Yeah, the total target numbers for both of those players have been out of this world. The, the stuff you love to see because 
they're too talented. Where you give them that many targets, something good is going to happen for your fantasy team. Yep. Uh, on the other side of – so they're both in your lineup this week. Yes, on, on the other side of the ball, um, you know, just grab the dice and chuck them across the room because on the road against Cincinnati, you know, if you want to find a place to start someone, they're not great against tight ends. <laughs> uh, they're not the worst, but they're not great against them. Kyle Pitts. You know, would you play him over Taysom Hill tonight? Probably not. No, probably not. I don't think so. You play him over Everett? Probably not. No way. No That's way. Right. I, just, I love the matchup for Everett okay. this week. I think Everett is a is is a great play. I would play Everett. Would you play him over Hurst in the same game? Yeah. I yes. think I'd do that. Yes, I would play him over Hayden Hurst. Uh, are we just waiting on – like, is Drake? what is Drake London for your fantasy team right now? Because he doesn't seem like a – an auto start or an auto no. flex. So then, but 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 we don't expect the offense to change, right? Like, what could happen in the in the the sands of time over the next ten weeks that would change our view of the of the Falcons' offense? Because you you know Desmond Ritter's not a a savior. It's not like Arthur Smith's going to want to make him expose him to a bunch of turnovers when you're winning games running the football I think it really is is more a matter of what happens to uh, on the defensive side of the ball for the Falcons if they are in these games if they're close if they're down one score or if they're up this is a team that wants to run the ball they do not want to throw the ball and they're going to be happy to even take a loss with 22 passing attempts in a game however they're if, they're, if they're getting smoked if the Bengals you know, which I, I think the Bengals are going to be able to put up points in the passing game against them, then they'll have to throw the ball more. If they're throwing the ball more, Drake London it, Drake London has been good on a on a per target basis, on a uh, you know, on a per route run basis. They're just not running and throwing enough. Here's so, an embarrassing stat though to that point. They're still number two in rest rate when trailing. Yeah, I mean that uh, they that's this is why I chose Zach Taylor over <laughs> Arthur Smith. The 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 story for me on Drake London is this week, he's still on your bench. Uh, but then from week 8 through week 17, they have plus matchups every single week except for two. So uh, he's interesting. The, the thing that can change is just a weaker defense against the pass, uh, against wide receivers. And the, the, the target share, if it holds, you just become more efficient and catch more of the targets. That's the hope for Drake London. Okay. But until then, he's just on your bench. Yeah, target share is one of those metrics I don't give a fart about on a team like that. Yep, on, on a team. This is why I'm not looking for plus matchups against wide receivers. I'm looking for against great offenses. I, I you have to force the Falcons to throw the ball, and then Drake London will be good. Detroit one and four taking on the Dallas Cowboys, who are four and two. This game's in Dallas. The Cowboys are seven point home favorites. The over unders forty nine points. And, uh, you know, Dallas escapes the Dak injury at 4-2 and two with an elite defense. And um, interesting fact here, Dallas and Pittsburgh are the only – is this true, Kyle? Read that for me. Yeah, Jason and I looked it up yesterday. Only teams without an offensive player to score 20 fantasy points in a game. That's kind of wild. But it also, like, makes sense. I guess I would have thought CD got there. Close. He's like 19 – points i mean you know you gotta there are a lot of fantasy relevant players in this matchup yes. i mean you have uh dak prescott who i think if you were waiting for him to come back you know i know teams that had stafford or russ and look just put dak back in your lineup agreed against detroit who is uh, uh poopy against all positions 31st best against quarterbacks yes and then um you know zeke Oh. 31st best against running back. The battle I just, plan. See, I, I can't help but feel like it's some sort of trap. <laughs> I don't. I, don't. I, I don't think it's a trap. I don't think. Kyle, that, look this up for me. What's Zeke's highest scoring game? Probably last week. Oh, in the last two years? Oh, I thought you were say this year. I just, like, when's the last time you scored two touchdowns? I this, don't know. Maybe this my. This week. <laughs> Yeah, this week. <laughs> so Zeke is uh is going to be talked about here. Tony yep. Pollard, I think you can shoot your shot with him. Tony Pollard or Eno? Eno. I'll take the volume. Tony Pollard. Okay. Yeah. I mean, he's getting like, what, eight carries? Jamal Williams in the same game. Ooh. Uh, with DeAndre Swift expected to be back. Yeah. Jamal Williams is still the 
I mean, he's still the goal line running back. I think even with DeAndre Swift back, so you could go for it. But Dallas is such a, a tough defense. I think I'd go Pollard. I'd I'd go for the home run. Uh, C.D. Lamb. Yep. Michael Gallup. Is he a flex consideration for your roster this week? Yes, yeah, he is. With with the amount of bye weeks and uh, injuries that are happening, I do think he is in flex consideration. I I have to unfortunately start him in our league of record. So that's kind of where I am. Uh, on him is is like he's not someone I'm trying to push in my lineup especially I'm a little bit more worried about the Dak injury than you and not because of any uh historical or analytical I, I issue I just I just fear the first game back in the what ifs but the matchup is certainly nice uh to Dak's thumb here with the uh, <laughs> with the Detroit Lions on the other side so uh, yeah you can start you could start Michael Gallup I think that Dalton Schultz is that's, actually going to have a big game that's the, the where I wanted to get here because I'm I'm excited for everyone in Dallas Dalton Schultz is very interesting because week one when you had a healthy Dalton you had a healthy Dak he was what he was last year which is just a necessary piece of this offense and Dak Dak gives a good target share to the the tight end position here, you know? and last week he got uh, he he kind of re aggravated that knee injury right before the game it was a late scratch, but he had a full practice on Wednesday. Is Dalton Schultz somebody that if you are in a tight end purgatory, would you be interested in trying to go get him right now? I think it's about that rapport with Dak, and I think that. Um, if he's fully healthy, he practices all week, he's going to start the ascent, ascension towards being a, a reliable tight end. Yeah. I, like if I'm I moving agree, forward, yeah. you know, I'm looking at him like the Tunyon range, maybe better than Tunyon. I would say better than Tunyon. Yeah, I mean, second half of the year, Dalton Schultz should be a really good volume. You know, he should You're be nervous as, about whether it happens week one yeah, when he's I, back out there I would the field. not, like personally, I would absolutely not play uh, Dalton Schultz. I – uh, almost every other tight end we've talked about, I, I would personally put would. Yeah, but, and that's why we have different voices here. The knee issue is my 100% only fear with Dalton Schultz. If I knew he was actually healthy, and that look, he practiced in full, but that doesn't mean that you're healthy. When you get out there, he's already re-aggravated this injury. Since he had the injury, he's missed two different games, two different times, and in between those games was not good. I have to wait until I see him healthy on a field before I put him back in my fantasy lineup. Well, that's but, but for that's the, very fair. But for the trade, if you're going to go get Dalton Schultz, I think you've got to make your decision of, will, do you think it that he's good to go and you think Dak is good to go? Because if so, then you need to go get Dalton Schultz right now because if you are wrong and da and Dalton has, yeah. if Dalton has 50 and a touchdown, you're that trade window, I think, is slammed shut. Absolutely. If if you want to trade for Schultz now, I'm fine with that. But okay. you have to be trading to put him on, in my opinion, you trade to put him on your bench and wait and see. DeAndre Swift, limited on Wednesday, pushing towards playing in week seven. I don't think it's a guarantee. It's not. Uh, which means, you know, Jamal Williams could get the start again. We're expecting Amon Ross St. Brown to be healthy. Yeah. yeah. Which means production absolutely Amon Ra's right back into your lineup uh he's been too good he's, you know to to question whether it, look it's not a great matchup but half the matchups in the league aren't great uh, you you start your studs and Amon Ra's a stud now Hawkinson is not necessarily a stud four targets one for six before the bye tough defense Dallas has given up about 5.9 points a game to the tight end position and uh you know, they're a top 10 defense, even in schedule adjusted against tight ends. It seems a little nerve wracking to throw Hawkinson out there. Yeah, it does, especially when you Amon were, Ra's back. And, well, yeah, Amon Ra's back. And against this defense, how many times are they going to want him in line, chipping, blocking, helping out there and not getting those sweet, sweet targets? Would you play Tunyon over him? Because I would. I think I would, yeah. Hawkinson or Hayden Hurst against Atlanta. Oh, you dog. Uh, <laughs> I'm playing Hawkinson. I, right? Yeah, I would go Hawkinson. Okay. Yeah, I do. I I do pretty much anything to not play Hayden Hurst. Really, Hayden Hurst's been okay, but I think part of Hayden Hurst's kind of ascension has been T. Higgins' uh, injury. If T. Higgins is at full strength, that's where I'm avoiding Hurst. The three, two, and one, Indianapolis Colts <laughs> blast off. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's what it is for Jonathan Taylor. They take on the Tennessee Titans again. They played just a couple weeks ago. Titans are three and two. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here, Titans minus two and a half. The over-under is 42 and a half. 
and the winner takes control of the division. Now, did you say the winner, or did you say winter? Oh, winter taking control? Ba -da -dum, ba -da -dum. Oh, Vermont weather report on Derrick Henry. Oh, boy. Is there snow on the ground? Now, I've been looking deeply into this. I feel like we should have lighting <laughs> with snow flurries. You got to right. work on this, yeah. Al. We, we need a, a snow machine. All right. Well, now we're, a... now we're just ridiculous. Yeah. And uh, in some jingle bells. Look, if you're talking Cranberry Lake up in, uh, you know, the northern. Oh, yeah. Cr the <laughs> world-renowned. Mm -hmm. Cranberry Lake. Yeah, in 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 uh, the the northern parts of New York, very close to Vermont, it does appear that snow will be coming. But now across the York. Vermont state line, right now, it does not project Ooh. to have snow by Saturday night. That's not great. That is not great. Well, weather's can surprise us. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> People in Vermont, keep us apprised to the snow on the ground. Well, it's a repeat because uh, these two teams played, like I said, uh, a couple weeks ago. Week four, Tennessee won 21 to 17. That's the game that Jonathan Taylor got hurt in. Uh, just moments ago, Kyle uh, shared a tweet from Stephen Holder about Jonathan Taylor saying he is the one that drove the decision to sit out last week's game. Good for you. He said, JT. quote, you just know your body. That's, I mean, that's impressive. And that he's feeling pretty good for this week. It's a big game. Henry went for 114 and a score against the Colts. This one's in Tennessee. But the uh, the Colts offense showed some signs of life on the Spotify live show yesterday. We talked about the fact that the Colts just start slow. They just seem to start slow. Last year, you know, John the Taylor, the first three weeks, it wasn't. It was right before he went on that massive run. I, I think we all would prescribe to the Taylor active Taylor play. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it's not a perfect matchup. Uh, the. The Tennessee Titans seemed have, like it the first time around. Uh, yeah, I mean the Titans have more of a pass funnel um, defense where they're 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 tough against the run and they're so bad against the pass. What you saw last week, the kind of look, Matt Ryan had a like legitimately good, maybe yes. great game last week when uh, he was slinging it around. I think he had three passing touchdowns, no interceptions, three hundred plus yards. So. You know the matchup here against the Tennessee Titans. I think that y you're you're talking Alec Pierce is in play. Obviously, Pity City is out there. Uh, what you know, about eleven targets, seven for fifty-seven in a hush down? Oh, you're Jason. not going to do it. The, the it, wide receiver eleven last week. No, no, no. Played on a hundred percent of the snaps. For the Indianapolis you, is this, Colts. Is this it's, Paris Campbell? This is Paris awful Campbell. Tower. Yeah, we don't chase the awful tower. Okay. We watch it from a distance. <laughs> yeah, make sure you. it's not a mirage. Um, it, it, it's interesting. I, I will point out when we talked about this game after Taylor struggled, it was massive surprise because everybody thought that Tennessee was the worst run defense in football. You remember that? Mm -hmm. It was the first couple, three weeks into the year, we thought it was a disaster that Taylor struggled against them. Now they're ninth against the run, eighth against the run, and schedule adjusted. So things change is my point. Like maybe our perception of that run defense was wrong. It sure. seems that it was. Uh, is Matt Ryan? He's streamable. Okay. He's streamable. The uh, A big difference from the last week from the other games, they were – throwing it even shorter than Matt Ryan had been previously. So that's that's the only reason why like do you in the in the darkest of hours consider playing Paris Campbell because if if they're going to do the quick pass and short stuff that that's where Paris Campbell is. I can't do it. I I don't blame you. I, I can't do him. it because I would play Pity before him and I would play well, Of course. and I would play Alec Pierce before him. So then you're saying, do I want Matt Ryan's third option? And the answer is no, especially with John, Jonathan Taylor dependency. It's returning. They can actually use what they want to do. Fair. Yeah, and they, they threw the ball a lot to Deion Jackson last week. So if Jonathan Taylor is back, I expect him to be involved in the passing game as well. That would be a delight. Can he please come back and be himself? It would be great. I haven't gotten a lot from him since my trade. Understand. No one's gotten a lot from him. No, 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 me. <laughs> I. It's about me. I've gotten less from him since I, since my trade. Robert Woods has had fab spin on him two different times this year. Uh, the first time was after the Traylon Burks injury, and he went out for four receptions. Or, I'm sorry, he went out and disappointed. Yep. Then he had a bye week, so a lot of people dropped him, and then he got picked up again. Now, his first shot without Traylon Burks was four for 37, no score. Are we just... No, thanks. 
I mean, if you have to start one. If I have to start Titans. one Titan wide receiver, I don't think that's a rule. No, if you I mean, <laughs> if, 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 if I have to start one, I'm certainly going to throw Robert Woods. You'd uh, start him over Paris Campbell, right? I don't know. Yes, I would start Robert PPR. Woods over Paris Campbell. In a PPR, I think I might go Paris. How many points per reception did Paris get on all the other games? Yeah. <laughs> when he had three, zero, two, four, two. Yeah, I mean he had a he had a big week with eleven targets last week, but that is one out of six. And uh, five and out of six don't, are bad. I was gonna say don't include that that was the best game of Paris Campbell's Probably career. career sure. Entire career. Yes, it was. Paris Campbell had never had a top twenty four finish. You know who does not have a top twenty four finish on this year? Robert Woods. <laughs> So breakout, breakout, start of the week, <laughs> Paris? No, I'm just saying I like him more than Robert Woods. That's fine. Robert Woods was 26th a couple weeks ago, so you're right. Green Bay, 3-3, three and three, taking on the 2-4 and four Washington Commanders. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Packers minus 4.5, over and under is 41.5. That's not a lot. Taylor Heineke is going to get the start for the Commanders. Hooray. Brian Robinson will undoubtedly get all of the work for the Commanders. And uh, that are you, are you sure? I mean, you had uh, I, like I'm I'm not just trying to be like a Gibson apologist, but they did say after the game, Ron Rivera said we got away from Antonio Gibson. That's on us. We need to get him out on the field a bit more. Is that concerning at all for Robinson? Who the the story is sensational of him returning from uh, from his assault and getting shot. It's a great story, but he's been incredibly inefficient. He was gifted a touchdown last week, and if they do, if he has to split more of that early down work with Antonio Gibson, does that concern you? I So as the person in the middle here, obviously Gibson's been your champion, and Andy's been uh, touting Brian Robinson for a while. I lean more with what the evidence we've seen than the verbiage that's been spoken in the you know in in the press conferences. Brian Robinson, they they clearly love this guy. Uh, they've played him well ahead of Gibson, and yes. he is the one that I think will get the vast majority of work in this game. He'll even get all if, the goal line, too. Even if he will get the goal line opportunities uh, if they come. That I mean, for this team with Taylor Heineke, you could say, oh, you get all the goal line, but it's kind of like a target market share of a, of, of a low-pass volume team. It doesn't really matter. You can get you know, what was the stat? Uh, A.J. Dillon has 100% of the carries inside yeah. the five yeah. on the has, season. Yeah, he has all two. It, it, from week one. Yeah. And so it's like, if you don't get them, you don't. Well, let's talk about those two guys in the same matchup because the one area the Packers are not great against, it is the running game. And that is an area where Washington's schedule adjusted. They're seventh in the league. Uh, I I imagine we'd go Brian Robinson over A.J. Dillon. Yes. Uh Aaron Jones, I think this will be a very good game for Aaron Jones. Okay. Um, it's time that they rotate their offense back to him. Randall Cobb and all of those targets will not be a part of this offense. I don't think they're going to put it all on Romeo Dobbs. And so I think a Aaron Jones is going to be the beneficiary, and we're going to talk about him later along with Robert Tunyon, okay. who I also think you can play this week due to the absence of Randall Cobb. Sure. Yeah, Alan Lazard is a great start. Uh, this matchup against the Washington Manders. Pretty juicy. It's it's great. They are the worst schedule adjusted against wide receivers. With Randall Cobb out of the way, there's a little bit more target clarity for Alan Lazard and Romeo Dobbs. Romeo Dobbs was shut down last week by uh, Sauce Gardner, but he had the targets. So I think both of those players are in play. Alan Lazard's someone you should start. Romeo Dobbs is someone you can start. If I had to make that Dobbs versus Gallup decision. You mean if you're feeling dangerous Ooh. not too dangerous not too dangerous no i i feel like that reference went is that know. just a callback to russell wilson's That's danger I, witch yeah. yeah yeah dangerous if you talk if you say it like that look, i thought dude, we were just talking about the sub yeah yeah uh, uh the sub does look good yeah except it's for, hard to look past russell wilson to see the sandwich <laughs> but the sub actually does look kind of delicious what's the sub uh, it's 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 a little spicy. It's got bacon. It's got a ton of it's meat on it. It's dangerous. It's a little spicy. Oh man! Oh, there <laughs> it is. I can't hit. I I tweeted out. I don't have enough cringe left in me. He's taken all my cringe out. I feel like my cringe meter is 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 it like one percent? And I'm gonna die if I see another Russell Wilson cringe commercial. So uh, Romeo Dobbs sorry, last week, sorry, like you said, sorry. was shut down in production, but did have nine targets. Christian Watson, who should have been benefiting here from the Randall Cobb 
uh, missing games, but Christian Watson did not practice on Wednesday. He's still dealing with that hamstring uh, injury. So I think that Lazard and Dobbs are both safe and in play. I Do agree. you want to touch the high knee? Terry McLaurin, <laughs> Curtis Samuel, Jahan Dotson probably not playing. Uh, he's Dotson came back to a limited practice on Wednesday. I think that the thing to talk about here is Terry McLaurin. Last year, he had a 25% target share with Taylor Heineke. This yeah, year he's yeah, but he didn't have Curtis Samuel. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't have, have okay. Dotson. Yeah, that, that's, that's fair. That's what I was gonna say. That's that, which is it's a fair counterpoint. But this year he has seen more than twenty percent of Washington's targets in just one game. And to, I mean, to the okay, well they didn't have Curtis Samuel last year. Does Taylor Heineke have a rapport with Curtis Samuel that they've been able to build up? He has it with Terry. He knows he trusts him. He's going to go to him. So. Just, uh, that, I think I think we have a little. He'd bit, be the one to start of them all. Yeah, we have a little bit more hope. I think for Terry this week. Yeah, Do you I mean, disagree with that? Would you start Curtis Samuel over McLaurin? Curtis Samuel over McLaurin. I think if it's a full PPR, yes, because Curtis Samuel is going to get manufactured touches that are less about rapport. But I don't think he's going to do much with it. This is not a good defense to go up against. And honestly. I would prefer to go away from Terry McLaurin and Curtis Samuel. I would play both Alan Lazard and Romeo Dobbs over the Washington Manders wide receivers with Heineke. So we have an update. Jahan Dotson left practice early today with the trainers. The old, or are they just going out for drinks? Or? The old, yeah, maybe. Maybe we can hope. Or this is the Keenan Allen, and now Dotson has re-aggravated. And if it's a re-aggravation, which it is, yes. Um, that's now a, a longer timetable. Yeah. Like, like, that that means he's not playing next week. This is why Keenan Allen's thinking about not playing. Exactly. Yeah. You come back and re-aggravate a hamstring issue. It's a it's it's a much more major problem. Tampa Bay three and three taking on the one and five Carolina Panthers. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Buccaneers minus eleven on the road. Over under is forty. That gives the Panthers under fifteen points, which makes perfect sense. Uh, PJ Walker had a negative a dot a dot is average depth of target <laughs> for no, the whole game no. for the whole game. His average depth of target That's was, him. was Christian McCaffrey. It was like there was a strong wind and if you threw it forward, it would go backwards. He didn't. It's one of the most impossible stats I've ever heard of. How is it even because everything went to Christian McCaffrey? It, it which did was behind like the a, line of scrimmage. <laughs> he threw the ball 16 <laughs> times. Oh, that's delightful. And if, there's been talk this morning about the McCaffrey trade rumors. They're they're really picking up steam. Not necessarily where, but that the teams are digging deep on being uh, able to pull this off. Oh, please be good for me. Man. If it's if I'm just I'm not I'm not saying that this is going to happen at all. But I'm saying that it would happen if I was the general manager of the Carolina Panthers. If I'm in legitimate trade talks for Christian McCaffrey, I do not put him on the field. Like I. I do not. Sure. They, we don't need to highlight Christian McCaffrey anymore, you know, to convince them to pull off a trade. I get him healthy. I say, here's a bye week. Get a fresh player. But um, I, I don't want to put those fears out I, there because I'm not the general manager. But. I, yeah, I mean, I don't disagree with the logic. But, and also, shame on you for even putting that <laughs> into the universe. What if they put him out there in one of those big bubble suits? <laughs> and they, they just said, no, we're playing him like normal. This is the new uniform protocol here. It's his new helmet. It yes. just covers his whole body. Uh, he's the RB3 on the year, by the way. 21 opportunities per game. On an offense that's been this bad, McCaffrey has been that good. Uh, DJ Moore, however, uh, not good. Goodness. And you can't play him. Please don't. No. And uh, on the other side, Jason, you like Tom Brady this week. I think we all would start Tom Brady against the Panthers. Yep. Leonard Fournette is the RB5 on the year right now and should continue to see a, a lot of uh, dumps from Mr. Thomas Brady. He's going to yeah. dump like a truck. Yeah. No, nope. okay. I feel like we're wow. setting them up. I mean, I gave him a lot of time, well, right? You, and then gave, you gave him so much time. I that put the I ball just, on the tee. He, you, you put the ball on the tee. I picked it up and I said, hey, look, the right. ball is on the tee. And then I put it back on the tee. Yeah. I even tried to make some eye contact. Yeah. He was, he was over there sports betting or something. He yeah, what lost. were you doing over there, yeah. Al? Are you taking down a uh, danger witch? I was, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was checking in for a flight. Oh, no, see, I knew, oh, there, I knew there was something going on. There's no way you're on those ones and twos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, I knew it. Those I are time it. sensitive, man. Yeah, yeah that, no, that is I, true. That is true. Is this a boarding group situation? Yes, sir. Yeah. What'd you get? C28. Oh, that's not, <laughs> not <laughs> worth it. You didn't even get what you wanted. 
<laughs> oh man! All right, you're late to both parties, buddy. Oh. <laughs> that drop hit on the C group. <laughs> all right, there. Oh, all true. right, well, <laughs> twice. Why not? Uh, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, play them. Yep. You want to dart throw a tight end? Kate Otten is there, but the Panthers are fifth in schedule adjusted against the tight end position, and. Um, it's just a, it's a little nerve wracking. Yeah. Kate, Kate Otten is nothing more than a DFS dart throw for a cheap salary. You're not going to play. Is he him. yours? He is not. No. Okay. no, this matchup isn't the right one. Um, and there's a couple. Uh, there's actually a handful of tight ends that I I quite like this week. Yeah. The 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 good <laughs> news is in week five he saw 14 percent of the targets with Cameron Braid out, and you expect Cameron Braid to be out with that second concussion. The New York Giants are five and one. We'll let that sit out there in the air for a moment. Okay. And the underdogs. Against Jacksonville in Jacksonville this week, the DraftKings Sportsbook line, Jags minus three. Come on. Really? I mean, I'd, be, I'd hit the button for my uh, almost upset, but I feel like that's – does that even count? Sure. Well, that, well, that I'll take a layup, okay. whatever. <laughs> I don't need to bomb from three. Andy's almost upset of the week. That is the line, right? Yeah. No, it is for sure. Yeah, it's probably one of the most mystifying lines of the week. Well, it, we'll find out why we're wrong yeah, I was very say, soon. When I see a line like this that is so surprising, I know that Yeah, we'll be wrong. That the sports books know something I don't. Uh Jacksonville, three point underdogs. The over under is forty two points. No, Jacksonville's three, three point, point sorry, favorites. three point favorites, the over under is forty two points. Uh the Giants can't get no respect. They're 34th, or sorry, <laughs> uh, 31st in passing yards per game, 18th in points per game. Their defense has been outstanding. Number one in fantasy points given up against wide receivers. Schedule adjusted, not as good, but still top half. Their schedule has been uh, helpful. Fortuitous. Yes, but you, you can't do anything but play your schedule. Sure. And they've managed to win. That being said, offensive starting options for the Giants, there's not a lot of them. There's nope. two of them. There's Saquon Barkley. He is obvious and in your lineup. And then the other one that I am very, very curious about, I am 100%, uh, it's too late now, but picked him up wherever he existed on waivers, and he, hopefully you grabbed him, is Wandale Robinson. I don't think I'm You'll starting. Play? No, I'm not okay. going to start Wandale Robinson. He, you know, on, on DraftKings, he's only 4,500. If you're looking for a cheap option and a full PPR, they could come out and surprise. I think Wandale's a good Wandale, play. Wandale, Rondale. You'd Rondale. go Rondale. I, I'd right? go Rondale. Still. I would go Rondale right now because Wandale, what did he have? Did he have 30% of snaps or fewer than it that was, last week? It was very little. His targets per 23 route 23% percent of snaps. Targets so, per route run was sensational. It was like the signs were fantastic of moving forward, but I still need. I need to see him above that 50%. Snap what about share. Wandale or Zay Jones, who leads the Jacksonville Zay Jaguars Jones. in receptions? Give me Zay Jones. Yeah, Zay, Zay Jones is the safer option. Um, you, you, this is calling your shot. When I, when I talk about Wandale and, and starting him this week, if you're going to put on the iron underpants to do that, that's just calling your shot, saying what we saw and knowing that he was a starter to start the season. Now that they worked him back into the rotation, they have another week, he's just going to be the starter this week. If he is the starter, he should actually be a good play. The problem is he has not been a full-time starter yet in his career. So right. you're calling your shot here. I think it's above 50% that the shot comes through and that he is good, but that's that's just, it's a gamble you don't need to take. When you have guys like Zay Jones that you just know are playing you know, all the snaps and running all the routes and getting a bunch of targets. Mike, you like Evan Ingram this week? Yes, I do. Revenge game. We're going to talk about him in a little bit. I shouldn't have said it like that. I should have said, Mike, you like Evan Ingram. I all do. All the time. I do. He's your Valentine. Uh, maybe. It's in consideration. Uh, Saquon has been amazing. Uh, you're obviously starting him, but he just to put, throw it out there, he leads the NFL and carries touches and total yards. Uh, the running back position in Jacksonville, Yikes. that's where it gets real frightening because, yes, Travis Etienne, he's out-snapped uh, James Robinson in three straight games. I mean, but what do you do against this Giants defense? I, I'd prefer – Are you willing to flex Travis Etienne? Of yeah. the two, yes, uh, because it's you're just – you're mm. hoping at some point Travis Etienne rips off a 40-yard carry, and that's his production for the, the day. The last two games, he has – 
a 30 yard run and a 48 yard run. So yeah, that's, that's what you're banking on. And that's got him to the top 24 at the position. James Robinson is somebody that I think fantasy players don't know what to do with. Cause the, it's not like it was kind of good and then kind of bad. It right. was top 10 performances for three straight weeks. And then outside the top 30 for three straight weeks. That being said, those first couple of weeks, it was touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. But big runs in, to get the touchdown. Sure, uh, big runs. But like in one of those games, he had a 37-yard run and finished with 2.8 yards a carry. Right. So like he, he hasn't necessarily been great. He had you know kind of a broken play. I, I'm looking to bench James Robinson if yes. I can. All right, the uh, all of the rankings, the sit, uh, the start sit tool. If you have questions for who to play this week, they're on the website at thefantasyfootballers.com. dot com. The community is at jointhefoot.com. dot com. The best people on earth that you can uh, throw questions out to, talk fantasy. Check it out there at jointhefoot.com. dot com. It's time for our starts. Starts of the week. All right, uh, we have – let's start at the quarterback position. Feel sure. good? Yeah. Justin Herbert is my start of the week against Seattle. Okay. This is the get-right spot for Justin Herbert. You hope for a boom. I think it's going to come this week against Seattle. Um, the The Seahawks were, before playing Arizona, the worst in terms of allowing the most yards per play, most points per drive. This is going – this is the first time Justin Herbert's been off the injury report. For his ribs right. all year long. Uh, it's going to be a pretty fun one, I think, up in Seattle in terms of total points. And I think Herbert, is this is the get-right game for him. All right, go ahead, Jay. I agree with you. We, we uh, alluded to it. Tom Brady is my start of the week at quarterback against Carolina. Uh, we mentioned him on the ride or die uh, earlier this week. The Bucks are 11-point road favorites. Since becoming a Buccaneer, Brady has been a 10-point favorite eight times. In those games, he's averaged 311 and 2.9 touchdowns Ooh, per game. So he comes through. This is a get-right game for both these quarterbacks, I believe. And my start of the week, it's Dak Prescott. I understand you can be hesitant about the hand injury. I am not. He, he took the maximum amount of time to be ready, and the matchup is there. The, uh, Detroit 31st in schedule-adjusted fantasy points to the quarterback position. And to highlight how bad is the Detroit defense, they have allowed seven more points than the rest of the NFL, and they did not play football last week. So Dallas has the second highest team applied total of any team in week seven. All right, my running back start of the week. I'm giving him a nickname right now that just came to my mind. Let's oh, okay. It's the hot potato. Oh, Aaron okay, Jones. Okay. Aaron Jones against okay. Washington <laughs> because you you know, you're throwing that hot potato around. You don't know when it's gonna explode. But it eventually does. But is the the okay? Well, I've, we've got a hole in the. I know we do. <laughs> you just yeah. your your face said you found it. Yeah, because in hot potato you it's, don't want it to explode, right? So maybe maybe the the opponent of Aaron Jones is playing hot potato. <laughs> okay, with you, with you. Okay, okay. The point being, Aaron Jones has monster games that win people weeks. You don't always know when they are. I think this is going to be the second time this year he does it. He did it, I believe, in week two. And uh, the touchdowns, they come in bunches for Aaron Jones. Sure. The, the recipe, you know, no Randall Cobb. It's the Washington defense. They're 24th in rushing yards per game allowed. They gave a huge game to James Robinson, Derrick Henry, to Montgomery and Herbert, that combination. Uh, Jones is – he looks like the same guy. This is, this is just a lack of the right opportunities in certain games. He's got – you know, he's fourth in runs of 15-plus yards. If you're the opponent – of Aaron Jones this week, it may some mitts, it some, may just land on you. Is what I'm saying. Mm, okay, we'll keep okay. working through that. Yeah, we got we got to <laughs> workshop it, but I like where we're going. Uh, uh. At, at running back for my start of the week, I'm going with Ezekiel Elliott. This yes. has been Mike's battle the, plan, the battle plan engaged for a month all along, and you know you traded for him after uh, last week or before last week for this point forward. The Lions rank dead last in schedule-adjusted points allowed to running backs. They've only played five games, and they've given up 10 rushing touchdowns and the fourth most rushing yards in the league with a game fewer opportunities to, to do that. This is a seven-point home favorite 
with Dak in tow, I think Zeke – if you can't start Zeke this week, you can't start Zeke. Oh. He should be a great play. Execute the plan. My running back start of the week, it is Kenneth Walker against the Los Angeles Chargers last yeah. week. 23 touches. He ran 15 routes. He ran 15 routes. That is great news for Kenneth Walker moving forward. He finished as the running back eight. He ran those routes because DJ Dallas didn't end up cutting into the work. This week he uh, faces the Chargers run funnel defense. Before last week, like before you know Nathaniel Hackett and that nonsense that we saw, we had three straight 100-yard rushers against the Chargers, Chubb, Damian Pierce, and James Robinson. <laughs> It's, we're highlighting defenses that got torched by James Robinson. You know that good starters are in for good things. My wide receiver start of the week is Big Mike Williams against Seattle. Oh, please be true. <laughs> yes. Look, I, I think this is just going to be a spectacular high-scoring affair. I have Justin Herbert as my start of the week. The tandem, the Mike Williams not facing Patrick Sertan. Um this is where I'm going. Seattle is 30th in total yards allowed per game, 28th in expected points added per pass attempt. It's the highest over-under of all of the games this week. I want a piece of it. Mike Williams has been a little hot and cold at times. He hasn't had his running mate, right, with Keenan Allen, who might be able to get back out there and help him out. But even if he doesn't, they're going to need to score points. That over-under is factoring in the Keenan Allen situation. So, so just – the the hot and the cold of Mike Williams. Like, do you, do you realize just all he does? Do you realize though how extreme we're talking about? He's, he's on my league of record team. If we're talking I kids games, it. he's red light green light. We we are talking about three games of 110 plus, 110 receiving yards. Three games, three games sub 20. Yeah, he is. <laughs> how is this? How is this possible? I, I don't know. He is. So good, not great. You know what I mean? Like he can dominate in the right situations. It makes no sense. But I, I actually, I, I can explain it. Oh, thank goodness. What is he great at? Deep. What are you, giant well, jump yeah. balls? Yeah, and what are those called? Fifty fifty. Fifty fifty balls. Oh, okay. he comes down with one of those. He's kind of like he's a. It's he's two face. I mean, last last week, Jason, you came into the office. You're like, didn't he catch that ball? That one on the oh, sideline? Yeah. It's, 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 a 50, it's a 50-50 shot with Mike Williams. And again, I'm, I should have reviewed it. There's a theme here with, uh, I think, a couple of my players, which is this is the week to play him. Uh, yeah. The, uh, same with me. I'm going to your game in another position in a second at wide receiver with Amari Cooper. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I've been a Cooper stand for years. You have. You all know this. And he's getting zero respect for what he's done through the first month and a half of the season. He is quietly the wide receiver 11 right now in half PPR scoring. He is averaging a 28% target share. That is better than Stephon Diggs. He has three weeks inside the top 12 already, just as many as Justin Jefferson. He is playing against the Baltimore Ravens this week. They have allowed the fifth most passing oh, yards per game. Oh, they're going to score. They're going to need to score. They rank 31st in red zone touchdown rate allowed. Uh, Amari Cooper is someone that should absolutely be in your lineup. He's going to have a great game. And I'm going with Brandon Cooks, Houston, Texas. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. He's trying to make up for earlier yeah. when he was <laughs> checking into his flight. Just, You're darn right. Just hit all the drops. Brandon Cooks against the Las Vegas Raiders. We've only seen one top 24 performance from him, but 26% target share, and this is a juicy matchup. The the iron underpants stream of the week with Davis Mills, that's because the Raiders are terrible against quarterbacks. They're terrible against wide receivers. 28th in schedule-adjusted fantasy points allowed to the wide receiver, and 31st in expected points added per pass attempt. I think that they could do some real cooking this week, and Brandon Cooks should be in play as a top and, 24 and, guy. And they're going to highlight him this week Maybe. so that, so that yeah. they can trade him to the Packers. There was there was some weird stuff of he was a coach's decision, is what they said, held out of practice, coming off of the bye week. But looking into it a little bit more, I, I think everything is is okay. They're just, there's some personal stuff going on that we don't have all of the, the information about. But as far as playing football this week, we're good to go. Well, I'm going to chase Robert Tunyon's 12 targets, 10 receptions okay. from last week. Uh, he was targeted on 32% of his 37 routes. He is a trusted 
uh, player on this offense, which is saying something, right? You have rookies that it hasn't been great for Romeo Dobbs in a couple of weeks. You saw Randall Cobb get a billion targets because he was trusted. He's not a better athlete than Romeo Dobbs. Rodgers is trying to get the offense going with the players he trusts the most. Tunyon's one of those guys, and he's slowly been acclimating. Every week's been a little bit better for the most part for Tunyon, so I think this week against Washington, he continues that. Yeah, and I'm going at tight end to that get-right game for Justin Herbert. Gerald Everett against Seattle I think is a great start. He's one of my favorite late-round tight ends and drafts. He's found his way to being a weekly start now at the tight end position. He's run the six most routes. He's seen the fifth most targets among all tight ends. He's being lined up in the slot the fifth most among tight ends. I mean, he is a big part of the passing game. He has designed plays for him every single game, and this matchup is – they are by far the worst at tight end. So much so that second place gives up on average about 13 fantasy points per game to two tight ends and first place or 32nd place, whichever way you look at it, is giving up 23. Can I ask a follow up then? Yes. Because you've made it, you know, the matchup's great. Everett's got an illness that he sat out of practice. We assume he'll be fine. But would you be willing to straight up make the switch because of the matchup and because of the limits they have in pass catchers? Straight to Donald Parham because well, he he, fl- I thought he was Donald Parham concussion. is in the concussion protocol, I believe. So still, yeah, he missed practice today with the concussion protocol. Yeah, so uh, I, it, it is you one have of those to things. Go to Stray McKitty. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> kitty, kitty. It is one of the situations where um, early in the week I was looking at Parham. Uh, he's twenty seven hundred on on DraftKings and the matchup. I just want a tight end in this matchup. Stray McKitty. So who you know whoever's healthy is going to get it done, and I think it's going to be Gerald Everett this week. All right, my tight end start of the week. It is Evan Angram, baby. Oh, Revenge game against his former team. The last two weeks, a 24% target share, 5 for 40, 6 for 69. Not too shabby at the tight end position. He has the 11th most yards at the tight end position. Uh, people are looking for bye week fill-ins like Tyler Higby. That's, I had to, to make a move, and I went with Evan Angram, prioritized him. And the matchup is also very solid for schedule adjusted against tight end. You know my feelings about Evan Ingram. Yeah, you're a never Ingram. I'm a never type Ingram of guy. He I, just he 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 gets you up to get down. Evan Ingram will have five for fifty five this week, and that five for fifty five for, for a tight end. I will take. That. I think he will have uh, uh, under three catches. Okay, he has done that twice this year, but four times he's been over. No, I know. I just I just hate him. Yeah. You know how you hate Taysom yeah. Hill? Yep. I hate Evan Ingram. Yep. I I understand. Moving on. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% guaranteed boom, boom, kicker of the week. Last week I went full Icarus. Launched. I was right into the sun, okay? Uh So this is context for getting started. (laughs) Oh, that hasn't hasn't begun yet? Engulfed in flames, I began to change. I guess you could call it luck. Yup. The boom boom inferno. A star like Van Gogh, yo. Kicking it with the bucks, Ryan. Suck up. Mike, we might be jumping the shark at this point. What is going on with the rhyme scheme? They're just and, getting more and more intense. And, and the meter. Mm, yeah. Like, Bro- our, our Brooks, what please. was your – Brooks said what? Yeah. <laughs> I, could, I didn't what? follow – I didn't really follow that. It yeah, was, what happened? It was deep. It was, well, Give look, us the uh, podcast uh, summary. True poetry usually is not understood by the average oh, listener. You've been a true um, poet for a while. It's it, it's also very difficult to rhyme, rhyme suck up. Um, that's part of it. And what happened here is I'm, uh, I'm, I'm rising like a Phoenix out of this sun. And okay. So we'll, we'll see. We need to rise TV. that segment like a Phoenix. What is happening? Now he was, uh, for those uh, listening at home, he was in a very red light. I, I loved that. The, the, the ambiance. I did. I did like that. That was yeah. a little post-production. And I guess then, the then producer he started, does. He did something today. Yeah, the lights were great. And then Jason started talking. Mm, you're welcome. <laughs> All right. That is it for today's show. But we Thank have more goodness. matchups tomorrow. Somebody gets shamed. <laughs> we'll leave it Leave it to mystery. It's not me. See you next time, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye.
Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.